the Ross Higgins, Ken Goldsby, and Robin Moore. Hi, and welcome to radio. As you know, we record the Samuel Peep Show in the traditional radio style, with a lot of help from our director, Mr. Dennis Phelan. Come on! And our sound effects operator, John Farkas, who is now arriving on a horse. Whoa, Princess Anne, whoa. <laughs> Memories brought to you by telecom. I remember it was raining at the airport when we said our goodbyes. Mama was crying. My little papa was trying to hide his tears by pulling his trousers up over his head. And my brother, Giuseppe, his tears dripping over his new suit, right down to his thongs. And my sisters, Carmel and Maria and Sophia and Carlotta, Lucia, Anna and Renata, and my little Vespa, and Rosa and Oriana and Gina and Shirley. I can still see them sobbing and screaming and banging their heads on the foreground. And my grandma wailing and clutching the wheel of the plane as it taxis down the runaway. <laughs> and behind uh, 160 of my closest relatives, uh, all running after the plane, singing Ave Maria and mourning and beating their breasts. And when I land in the Brisbane, I think about my family and I wonder why they were doing that. I only come up from Melbourne for a business meeting. <laughs> Order. Order in the court. Gwendolyn Alice Ferberger. How do you play? Guilty. Guilty with knobs on, but I was provoked, and any woman should be allowed to kill when faced with, with that. With what? Well, you see, what happened was, I was sitting at home. Oh, a ripple dissolve. Anyone home? Not if you're a Jehovah's Witness. It's only me, pet. Oh, hello, Joyce. Oh, I do like your hair like that. Oh, really? Yes, it doesn't make mine look so bad. <laughs> oh, Gwen, you're a car. How would you like a cup of Joyce? Only if you're making it, pet. Well, I am. Oh, don't make it just for me, pet. I'm not. Well, as long as you're having one. I am. I mean, don't go to any trouble. I'm not. Are you sure? Yes. Goodio. Now, what would you like, tea or coffee? Oh, I'm not fussy. Well, what would you prefer? Oh, anything, thanks, Pet. I, I don't mind. I've got both, so what would you like, tea or coffee? You decide. You're the guest. Oh, well, whatever's easiest, Pet. What do you want, Joyce? Doesn't matter, I drink either. You'll wear either in a minute. Do you want tea or coffee? Oh, whatever you pick up first, Pet. I've got one in each hand, Joyce. A tea caddy and a jar of coffee. In police terms, they could be classified as blunt instruments, so I suggest you tell me what you want. Um, I'll have tea. Right. Tea. Or coffee, it doesn't matter to me. As long as it's warm and wet, as the sailor said to them. Ah, you've got me to strangle hold. Tell me what you want or I'll rip your head off. All right, all right, I've decided I'll have... Whatever you're having. Ah! Yes, case dismissed. Good morning, Tatu. Morning, boss. The plane, the plane, the plane. The doctor, the doctor, the doctor. <laughs> That was 
because when the saints go marching in by who else but the New Zealand Symphony Orchestra. No mistaking their style, and that classic, fantastic black plastic recording is number six with a bullet on the North Island Top 40. And here in beautiful, exciting downtown Auckland, it's three minutes to nine on the bright and bubbly Godfrey Sutwell Breakfast Show. We'll cross to Wayne for a traffic report. Have things improved in the last hour, Wayne? Yes, Godfrey. Uh, there is some traffic here now. Oh. There's two traffics, in fact. So, if you're on your way to work, watch out crossing the road. Thank you, Wayne. Yes, the clock on the wall says we're having a ball. So, on with the fun. Let's have an advertisement. Get in there. Why, hello, Ken. What is that lovely smell coming from you? Hello, Mary. That's my new sheep dip. Newington's Grade A sheep dip. Oh, it is beautiful. Take me, Ken. Goody, oh. Yes, man, you can have any woman you like if you use Newington's Grade A sheep dip. Thank you. Coming up to nine o'clock. So it's cheerio from Godfrey Sutwell Breakfast Show as we cross to the newsroom. Godfrey Sitwell with the National News. I haven't got much to read to you today because I left my paper on the bus. But before we move on to cooking with Godfrey and the funeral announcements, we'll cross for the, all the overseas news from Auckland's sister city, Hobart. Here in Tasmania... We done a real good thing. Yes, we have invented a game which is more popular than sliced bread when you want to make a sandwich, but you can't because you lent the knife to someone who hasn't got sliced bread. That's an old Tasmanian saying. Anyway, a professor at our university put his heads together and invented this game called Tasmanian Pursuit. It's our answer to Trivial Pursuit. And no, that doesn't mean we play Follow the Leader with Michael Hodgman. No, you see, Tassie Pursuit is, well, it's precisely almost exactly similar to Trivial Pursuit, except that it's uh, totally different. This is because our 6,000 questions are all about Tasmania, and so are the seven answers. <laughs> Those answers are Granny Smith, Jonathan's, Golden Delicious, Big Jonathan's, Apple Pie, Cider and Hobart. But that's all that's different. Our game has still got the board, the dice and the coloured plastic bits. And we play Tassie Pursuit exactly the same way we play Trivial Pursuit. We gather the family together, then someone hides the game and the first one to find it wins. This is Laurie Jackson Jackson, downtown Hobart. Bye-bye, Mum. <laughs> <laughs>